When I was a kid, I remember thinking that Ted Cassidy was a pretty scary looking feller. The guy was so tall. He was just so imposing, 6'9", if I remember correctly, and he had that elongated face that just made him look a little bit, what's the word, unearthly. So I guess that's why getting the role on The Addams Family was pretty much perfect casting. Everybody on the show was great, don't get me wrong, they really were, but Ted Cassidy, well he was something else. He was absolutely perfect as Lurch. So much so, in fact, that when the show debuted in 1964 and ran for two seasons on ABC, it ended up making Lurch a much more prominent character than was originally anticipated. In fact, originally the show's producers envisioned Lurch as a mute character. No dialogue, but when Cassidy ad-libbed the now infamous, you rang, well, the rest is television history. Lurch became such a popular character that he even had his own theme song and accompanying dance. Between this and the Batusi, which would debut a couple years later, I've got to say that the 60s were truly a wonderful time to cut a rug on the dance floor. And while at first Cassidy loved that Lurch had become such a popular character on the show, as time wore on he began to realize that being so perfectly cast for the role might turn out to be a bit of a mixed bag. You see, he really thought of himself as more of a serious actor, and Lurch, well, the character didn't really push his acting skills to their limit. And even more worrisome was the legitimate concern about typecasting. Cassidy had seen what had happened to other actors who weren't able to shake the long shadow of the characters that they played on television, and he wanted nothing to do with that. So when the show was canceled after the second season, Cassidy breathed a huge sigh of relief. Unfortunately, Cassidy's fear was actually very much warranted as he became known as the guy who used to play Lurch, and it really did get in the way of a number of roles that he would have liked to have played. At least Cassidy felt that it got in the way. But I've got to say that I think his size probably played into it a bit as well. As sad as it is to say this, not many leading roles in movies or on television are going to go to someone as tall as Ted Cassidy was. So because of that, Ted started taking advantage of his height. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of this video how Ted seemed a little bit unearthly. Well, that actually played to his advantage. His appearances on Star Trek are actually the very first memories that I have of him on television. The Addams Family would come later on in reruns. In the early 70s, in an interview that you can find right here on YouTube, Cassidy seemed to have really come to terms with both the pros and cons of being Lurch. In this particular interview, he said, Lurch is going to be remembered for a long time, whether I like it or not, and I think there are some things about it that I like. Further evidence of that is that Ted Cassidy returned to the role of Lurch when the Addams Family showed up as special guests on one of those new Scooby-Doo movies that aired on Saturday mornings during the early 70s. I loved those things, and each week I could not wait to see who would visit with Scoob and the gang next. Quick sidebar, I ran into this piece of fan artwork while I was searching for an image of the Addams Family's appearance on Scooby-Doo. And I've got to say that I would absolutely love to see this one happen. I know there's a new version of the Scooby-Doo classic team-up show on Cartoon Network called Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. And while I doubt it will ever happen, if it did, if Scooby and the rest of the gang ever did find their way to Springfield and team up with Chief Wiggum and the rest of his crew, I'd probably just have to turn off my TV because I don't think there would ever be anything else that could top that. Along with Scooby-Doo, Cassidy found that he had a talent for voice acting and became quite a voice actor in demand. As such, he voiced multiple characters on one of my favorite Saturday morning cartoons, yep, the good old Super Friends. Among the characters that he voiced were Superman's arch enemy Brainiac as well as Aquaman's most deadly foe, Black Manta. Yep, pretty cool stuff when you're 10 years old munching on Lucky Charms cereal hoping that your parents will sleep in so that you can keep watching cartoons instead of starting on your weekend chores. Even better than Ted's vocal appearances on Super Friends, however, was his mind-blowing monumental work as the legendary creature Bigfoot on both The Six Million Dollar Man as well as its spin-off The Bionic Woman. 
And yes, I know Ted wasn't the first to play Bigfoot on the show. That honor goes to Andre the Giant. Ted, however, in my humble opinion, certainly held his own. Sure, he wasn't as tall as Andre the Giant, who was well over seven feet tall, but Ted was still an imposing, massive creature when he was all costumed up. I really did love those bionic Bigfoot storylines. By the way, did you know that in the state of Washington, the county of Skamania to be exact, they passed a law in 1984 making it illegal to hunt and or harm Bigfoot. Yep, if I were a Sasquatch, I know where I'd choose to live. So getting back to Ted, towards the tail end of the 70s, Ted again found vocal work on another one of my favorite TV superhero shows. This time it was the live action version of The Incredible Hulk starring Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. Ted was not only the narrator during the show's weekly intro, but he also provided a lot of the Hulk's savage grunts and growls. I'm betting that when he was called upon to growl like the Hulk, Ted just channeled his inner lurch. In 1979, tragedy struck when Ted passed away after surgery to remove a non-malignant tumor. No one saw it coming, really, and because of that, days would pass before the press reported that he was no longer with us. A strange ending, for sure, for a man who made a career out of playing strange characters. That said, looking back, sure the characters were fairly strange and eccentric, but Ted, well, he triumphed over an industry that so desperately wanted to typecast him, and he did that by looking them straight in the eye and doubling down on whatever preconceived notion they had of him. Pretty darn impressive, if you ask me. Okay, let's end this video here. I didn't talk about Ted's movie roles, but he could be found on the silver screen as well. When you can find work as an alien on Star Trek and then turn around and work on a classic film like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, well, you must be doing something right. All right, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up, maybe even subscribe to my YouTube channel. I talk about music, movies, and television. Mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching. <music>